This slide is trying to show the tremendous access the crossbar switch gives to each of the system peripherals as well as the PowerPC 440. The crossbar concept simply relieves the problem of busy buses. It is configured as a dual 5 to 1 multiplexer, meaning two independent and simultaneous connections between one of five masters to one of two slaves can happen at the same time. Three of the five possible masters are the PowerPC 440 processor instruction read, data read, and data write buses. The other two possible masters are the outputs of two uh, other multiplexers. These identical multiplexers further select between two DMA controllers and a PLB bus slave target. Recall that masters can also reside on either of the slave PLB buses. The two slave connections to the crossbar are a memory controller interface, that's the MCI port, to a double data rate RAM controller and the master PLB bus. The PowerPC 440 processor also has four direct memory access or DMA ports. These are commonly used to connect to the tri-mode Ethernet Max included in your FPGA. Each offers a 32-bit channel for each direction and interface to the crossbar at 128 bits. They can also operate asynchronously with the interconnect clock. They also offer a byte realignment on the TX and RX. They also can be asynchronous with the interconnect clock. They offer an efficient flow control management, and they're also programmable by the processor or the FPGA fabric. The PowerPC 440 processor supports a memory controller interface, or MCI port, that is designed to connect directly to the DDR2 memory controller of the PowerPC processor. One of the primary advantages of the MCI port is that it guarantees a fixed latency of execution because there is no bus arbitration required. The separate memory interface improves system performance and enables access to a larger memories. It supports a FIFO-like interface and performs row bank detection, which simplifies the soft controller logic. It also supports 32, 64, or 128-bit data transfers per cycle. This can be easily connected to a Xilinx memory controller provided with an EDK. Now we're going to have a look at a few examples of this crossbar switch to get a bit better feel of it. In this example, the separate memory and the I.O. buses improve system performance. This is a typical embedded system, a 440 processor, some DDR2 memory, and some peripherals attached to the MPLB bus. Note that the peripherals are connected to the I.O. or master PLB. That means any master in the system can access these peripherals. The memory is connected to the memory controller interface bus and is connected to the DDR2 memory controller. And this is connected off chip to a DDR2 memory. In this case, there is one master device, and that's the PowerPC 440 core, and it can access any of these peripherals. So again, fewer masters, relatively simple system. Well, this system is a little less typical, shall we say. We really wanted to give you a chance to look at some of the EDK memory controllers and talk a little bit about them. First of all, note that the PowerPC slave peripherals are all connected to the MPLB bus. These memory peripherals, as well as the MCI memory, will also be accessible to other masters that are connected to the slave PLB bus. But in this case, there is no slave PLB bus, so it's, again, pretty simple. Okay, so again, it's not very typical, but you should note that all of these memory controllers are included with EDK, and I just want to mention a few of these. So from left to right in the diagram, the first is the external memory controller, or EMC component, attached to an off-chip flash device. The next is the multi-port memory controller, or MPMC component, and that's attached to an off-chip DDR memory in this case. The next is a block RAM memory controller, or block RAM block, attached to on-chip block RAMs. The next is another external memory controller, or EMC, and that's attached to an off-chip SRAM, unlike the earlier one, which was uh, connected to an off-chip flash device. The next component is another multi-port memory controller, or MPMC, connected to, this time, an off-chip SD RAM. Again, showing you that this is a programmable device that can interface to different external memories. 
And lastly, we have a System Ace controller that is retrieving contents from an off-chip System Ace device. Now, this is a Xilinx technology. You, not as frequently used, but still pretty exciting if you need to store large pieces of memory uh, outside the FPGA. So you might go check it out if you think that might be interesting to you. In this illustration, there are two embedded TMACs that have been added, and these are attached to the two DMA channels in the upper peripheral block. Now, both TMACs are potential masters to access the memory controller port or the MPLB bus. Because they're both on the upper master, that is, arbitration logic will be necessary to determine which of the TMACs will be the master at any given time. Recall that they are connected to the same multiplexer. Sounds like maybe the TMACs should have been connected to different DMA ports so that the special arbitration would not be necessary. So recall that there is a separate unused multiplexer at the bottom of this diagram. If we'd taken one of those and connected down there, we wouldn't have to worry about that. The TMACs are connected to the processor block through a thin wrapper that is provided with the embedded development tools and attached to the DMA port. Note that this TMAC we're building here differs from the XPS underscore LL TMAC component, which is attached to the PLB bus. The XPS TMAC component supports the hard TMAC included with Vertex 4 and Vertex 5 FPGAs. The XPS TMAC also supports the soft implementation. That would be one that is not built with dedicated silicon like it might be or would best be in Vertex 5 or Vertex 4, but instead would be built and targeting a different FPGA and would be built with their standard LUTs and registers of FPGA logic. And likewise, that TMAC, since it's built with LUTs and registers, would be slower than the dedicated one in silicon. Note that the soft version does have a charge associated with it because, again, it's an optimized component. If it's dedicated in silicon, uh, that hard version, as we would call it, would be included for free with the silicon at no extra charge. But as you know, as you buy silicon that has lots more features, there would kind of, in effect, be a charge with it. Now, adding the TMAX this way may not currently be supported with the base system builder. Uh, the information on that's a little bit old. To be completed, you're probably going to have to manually edit the design. By adding a TMAC into the base system builder will result in the TMAC being attached to the PLB bus. In other words, the base system builder defaults to building the TMAC as being a peripheral on the bus rather than directly being connected to a DMA port. For more information about the hard TMAC, we want to encourage you to refer to the Vertex 4 Embedded Tri-Mode Ether Ethernet Mac User Guide. And likewise, there's a corresponding document for the Vertex 5 TMAC. For more information about the soft version of the Ethernet Mac LogiCore IP, check out the LogiCore Tri-Mode Ethernet Mac User Guide. Referencing LogiCore, that means it's a core built from CoreGen and is built with lots of registers. So if you're curious about that, have a look at those documents. All Xilinx processor systems have standardized on the PLB V46 bus. In addition, you can have as many microblaze processors in an FPGA as will fit in the device. In this example, the microblaze processor system is attached to a PowerPC processor via a slave PLB bus. This allows the microblaze processor core to access any peripherals attached to the MPLB bus, which is attached to the MPLB port, and memory on the MCI port. But the PowerPC cannot gain access to any of the peripherals attached to the slave PLB bus because this connection cannot be made by the crossbar. This is a simple multi-processing system and illustrates the use of the slave PLB interface, showing that it allows multi-ported access to the memory and I.O. of the PowerPC 440 processor block. Now, we want to give you a chance to test your knowledge of the content from the first half of this recorded e-learning. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the base system builder and its uses with the PowerPC 440 processor.